Hi everybody, this is Anne. There's an unlimited number of glaze choices out there to decorate your pottery. Commercial glazes are readily available, but they're expensive. Making your own glazes is less expensive, and it leaves open the opportunity to experiment with them to fit your needs. In this video, I'll take you along our glaze making journey with one particular glaze that resulted in some very unexpected outcomes. Recently, I saw a post from Tom James showing a vase he glazed with a new glaze recipe he developed called Slate Blue. I was intrigued by the soft looking surface and the way the color broke over the rim which resulted in beautiful blue flecks. Looking at the recipe on glazy.org, I made sure I had all the ingredients to give this a try. When reading a glaze recipe, the main ingredients are normalized to add up to 100, with the choice of colorants added on at the end. The reason for this is so that if you want to make a bigger batch, it's easier to make calculations. In this case, I wanted to make a 300 gram batch, so all I had to do was multiply each ingredient by 3. For instance, this recipe calls for 40 grams of kaolin in a 100 gram batch. I just multiplied it by 3, which means I need 120 grams for my batch. Luckily for me, the famous Clay Bottoms volunteered to make up the recipe. I was a bit skeptical, but he swore he'd follow the recipe to the letter. <laughs> hmm. What the? Glazing's easy. You just put a little bit of that in here. Maybe a little bit, uh, put some of this in here. Maybe a little bit more, yeah. <laughs> okay. I can't wait to see what happens with that. In the meantime, I thought it'd be interesting to do some experimenting with the colorants to show just how a slight change of the rutile or the cobalt can change the results in a big way. I'll show you how I make a glaze. Since Clay already made the original recipe, I'll make a batch lowering the amount of cobalt. First I set the scale to measure grams, then placed the container on it and zeroed it out. I also wore my dust mask for safety. First, I measured out the 120 grams of kaolin. I dumped this into a separate container. I repeated this for all the other main ingredients of the recipe. If you'd like to see a more in-depth video on how to make a glaze, check out the link above. For the colorants, I measured out 12 grams of light rutile and dumped that in. For this particular sample batch, I lowered the cobalt in the original recipe to 0.1 gram, meaning I needed 0.3 grams, which I couldn't measure on my digital scale. So I used a triple beam balance. It's not a lot of cobalt, but it's so powerful I'm hoping it'll make a difference. I gently mix the dry ingredients together to minimize the dust. For the water, a good starting point is a 9 to 10 ratio of water to glaze. But this glaze has so much kaolin and talc that soaks up the water that by the next day the glaze was too thick. I had to add more water and found that about 500 to 515 grams of water worked the best for this recipe. For such a small batch, I just used a stick blender to mix it up. It looks a bit thin right now, and it's best to let the glaze set overnight so all the particles can hydrate. This also allows the glaze to thicken. Now here are all the bisque fired bowls all ready for my batches of test glazes. I made three more samples with differing amounts of cobalt and rutile. I labeled all the test glazes with a separate number and amounts of colorants I used in each sample. I used an underglaze pencil to label each bowl. I always think I can remember what glaze I used on each piece, but I never do. I fired the bowls to cone 5 with a 5 minute hold, and I can't wait to see the results. Remember, here's Tom's vase. This was the result that we were expecting. 
and our results were not even close. <laughs> First, here's the clay bottoms batch of the original recipe applied to the standard brand English porcelain. Although it looks nothing like Tom's version, it broke beautifully over the rim and the swirl, and it had lovely silver veins and flecks which really complemented the cool blue. I asked Clay if he used too much cobalt, but he's sure he followed the recipe. Here's the next sample where I followed the recipe exactly, but I substituted dark rutile for the light rutile. The blue was definitely toned down to a silvery gray. It did break over the rim and throwing marks, but it didn't have the blue flecks or the silver streaks like the other version. Here's the next sample where I lowered the cobalt oxide by 0.1%. I can start to see a slight silver green color emerge from the blue gray. It may look like crazing in the bottom, but I had a little crawling after the first high fire, so I added more glaze and refired it, resulting in that cool effect. This next version, I lowered the cobalt even further. Depending on the light, you can really see a silver green hue from the yellow of the rutile and the blue cobalt coming together. It breaks nicely and the surface is so buttery soft to the touch. Finally, here's a bowl glaze with the version I made for this video. This was the closest we came to Tom's results, but I still didn't get the blue streaks like he did. I can see a bluish hue, especially where the glaze was thick, but no flex. In the end, there's so many variables when making glazes which affect the outcome, but to get another perspective, I wrote to Tom to see if he had any ideas of why they were different. He suggested lowering the cobalt, which we did, and try other experiments like increasing the rutile. I need to try that next. I guess the lesson is always test, test, test. Now we may not have gotten the results we hoped for, but we did get some lovely glazes to use on pieces in the future thanks to the newest members of our Little Street Pottery Research Facility team. If you'd like to join the team and earn a title, click on the Super Thanks button or the link to buy me a coffee. It also really helps us out if you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. See you next time in the studio. Get some layers. Throw a little bit of that in there. Throw a little bit of this in here. <laughs> <laughs>